fixes that up. Next stop. John, next stop. Redemption, baby, redemption. He's, he's down right there. He just hit the dirt. I drilled him with the old pro. That was just crazy. That's the biggest book of my life. He's a big buddy dear too. He's mature, definitely. I just smoked you. I don't know where he came from. Welcome back to Hunt Hard by Vital Shot Productions. We're back in the stand again in Blanchard, Michigan with Travis Perkins. And second, we're actually on this exact property we're filming today with my dad as he encounters two bucks. Not one, but two. So a couple exciting hunts coming your way. It sounded like he piled up, but I don't know. The shot looked a little back to me. Oh, man. That was crazy. So. So now that I've calmed down a little bit, um, I gotta tell you what happened there. So the buck, it's a nine point. He just showed up a couple days ago. First time I've ever had him on camera. I seen him up here and he was coming right to me to a slam dunk shot. Um, he was about 15 yards and I'm all set up, ready to take the shot on this deer and this doe starts blowing behind me, just left and right. I couldn't figure out what was going on. The wind was not in that direction. I didn't, what, what, was, what was she blowing at? Well, when that buck was standing there, I heard something coming underneath of me. It was a bobcat. A bobcat came right underneath me, went right to that buck and ran, it, ran that buck off. The buck did a big circle. I thought it was gone. I tried to get a shot up here, couldn't get it. Did a big circle and it actually came back to me and the doe was still blowing. And uh, the buck came out and I had already knew what the distance was, it was 45 yards. So I dialed my, my HHR sight up, got it to 45, um, gave me a broadside shot and I when I shot, I knew it was high and ran off. I knocked another arrow, hung my bow up, and thought it was over. The doe was still blowing. So I'm sitting here checking her out, trying to see what was going on. I look up, 
and the buck is back in that spot, standing there 45 yards, not a clue I'm here. So I turn around, grab my bow, got the camera set up. By the time I got back, it was gone. And I just figured it maybe moved to my, you know, where I couldn't see it. And it gave me a shot through my other shooting lane. And I dialed my scope to 35 yards and looked like I center punched him, but it was back. So I'm going to for sure give it probably all day. I don't want to bump this deer. It's a good buck. Um, so we'll see. <clears throat> Whew, man. Got him? Got him? <laughs> oh, this is great. Sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bad boy, job. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> stuck in there. Don't break him off. Oh, he's on. <laughs> he was. You needed that, didn't you, job? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm still stuck on Zoom. Man, he stayed that quick, huh? He did. Yeah. Holy cow. Got a crack at this buck, he was about eight o'clock. I uh, actually missed him on the first one and he gave me another shot and about 40 yards and the shot was questionable. So we gave it 10 hours um, and made quick work. He was he bled really well, um, went a little over hundred yards probably and piled up, um, couldn't be happier. I This buck just showed up um, maybe four or five days ago and I got him on trail cam and I got out here and got after him and uh, couldn't be happier. Could not be happier. I got one tag left and uh, see if we can get it done. stays up at night to save a sick fawn's life, gets up and still goes to work at sunrise. This person works in the heat, the cold, and the rain. He needs to feed his animals, make sure they have water. If the water's frozen, he must break it so they can drink. He needed somebody to collect real scents and smells from deer, to provide hunting scents to the hunters so they could feed their families. So, God made a deer farmer. Introducing the Boning Pocket Quiver. Safely and securely holds six arrows of any diameter. Great for the range, backyard, woods, and 3D course. Slip it into your back pocket or put it in your pack or bow case so you're always ready to go. Stop by your local archery shop or visit boning.com to get one today. serious hunter, you give it your best. You don't skip steps. You're the details guy. Efficiency is everything. It's time to step up your game. What a great buck by Travis Perkins. He's seen a bobcat and sealed the deal on a nice buck. Yes, he did. And next up, we're with my dad, and as always, he keeps it interesting in the woods. So you're going to want to stay tuned for this next, next hunt. But before that, we got our tip of the week. All right, today we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about mock scrapes. Um, we're gonna to talk to you about how we make them, where we put them, and why we use them. Um, they're really important 
to help you draw bucks into the area. So we wanna show you step-by-step step how we go about putting those in. First thing you wanna do is pick the area where you want your mock scrape or mock scrapes. Maybe you wanna do multiple. In this location, I'm just putting one in. So it's on a very small piece. Um, okay. One of the issues is a lot of times the deer are 30, 40 yards out in this field. And even with today's equipment, you can easily make that shot, but I'd rather take a 20 yard shot any day of the week. So by putting this mock scrape in, I'm gonna draw the deer in closer to me. Okay, so it's time to get started on making your mock scrape. First off is what you wanna do is you wanna work up the ground about a two or three foot circle underneath that overhanging branch that you've already picked out. Work it up, get all the grass out of there, get it right down to dirt. You can even fling some dirt around. The deer naturally do that with their hoofs. Next thing you wanna do is break one of those branches on your overhanging limb. The deer naturally do this in the wild. If you look at scrapes that are made by bucks, they're sticking their head up in there, rubbing their glands, their horns are getting up in there. And when it does that, it snaps some of the limbs. So you'll see a lot of times limbs broke. And what it also does is it creates sort of a hanging branch for them to smell, rub glands on, and be a great location to check out what deer are in the area. Now, as you can see, when I'm making this broken branch, I'm using a tool. You could use sticks. I'm using the Scrape Maker by Conquest Sense. But um, getting up there and snapping that without using your hands, you really don't want to grab onto it to snap it with your hands. You're going to put scent all over it. And where the deer are sniffing and you're trying to get them to sniff, you don't want to put human scent in there. Now, I'm also going to add a little bit of scent to this. Again, you want to use some type of herd or gland scent to put on this limb. You don't want to put estrus on there or some rutting buck scent or anything like that. Um, it'd be really hard for them to get those parts of the deer up on those limbs. So what do they do, the deer in the, in the wild? They rub their head, their glands on it, so you want to use those type of scents. And this one I'm using Evercom, and I like to use Evercom just because it's a stick wax form. It's really clean, nice. It's got a great smell to it from natural Michigan deer, and um, so I like to use it. So I'm rubbing it all over this branch just to put some nice scent on there for the deer to, uh, to start working that area. The next step is I actually want to put a little bit of scent in the scrape. Now you don't have to do this um, and you can use multiple things. Um, in this instance, I'm using some rutting buck. I'm actually scraping off some of that wax from Conquest Scents on there and putting it right down in the scrape. That's getting that natural rutting buck scent right in the dirt. Now you could use estrus, you could use different doe and buck peas. You could use a lot of things. Some people use drip bottles um, to keep them coming into this area. So um, that's what I'm using today. But again, there's lots of options out there for what you can actually put in the scrape. So I've got my mock scrape two to three feet around. I broke my branch. I've got my sense in. Last little step I'm gonna do with the scrape maker actually has a uh, deer hoof print on it. So I'm making a quick print in the dirt uh, to make it just a little more realistic.
So I look out and here's the buck I've been getting pictures of. He's coming right at me, right out of the swamp, straight out of the north. Wind's perfect and I should be able to get a poke at him. Introducing the all-new Bowhunter Elite Series from Senna, featuring an unheard of combination of premium features and technologies unavailable anywhere else. It's the most advanced bow hunting outerwear available today. Ultra quiet, exceptionally warm, and packed with premium features and technologies designed to help elite bow hunters sit longer and get closer. The era of compromise is over. Michigan Whitetail Food Plots is here to help you increase your deer herd and also improve your whitetail habitat. We do that through three simple needs, food, bedding, and water. If you're looking to improve your habitat this year, give us a call at 231-920-3047 or check us out on our website at michiganwhitetailfoodplots.com. You can also save $100 this year by using promo code PLOT100 and save $100 off your first food plot implementation. We look forward to working with you. Orthotech, prosthetics and orthotics, building better lives. Ten Point Taxidermy out of Whitehall, Michigan can help you preserve your trophy of a lifetime. For a quick turnaround and great prices, call Bill at Ten Point Taxidermy, 231-750-7426. Make it really enjoyable for your extended stay. 
We hope that you, you keep us in mind the next time that you're planning your next motocross vacation. Look no further. We'll be happy to have you out here at Marlins. Well, I'm sitting here upset, wondering how the heck I missed that deer. And as I was sitting there, I hear some splashing coming from behind me from the south. And here comes the other buck that I've been getting pictures of. That was just crazy. I, I can't believe I missed that first one. I had my head pulled and I, I drew high on him. I can't believe it. <laughs> he runs around me and uh, goes downwind. I think he might have smelled me, takes off, and I'm waiting here and here comes another one. He come up, you know, he's about the same size. He might be a little bit smaller. It's just two that's been out here. And he literally comes up and sniffs the arrow that I missed the other one on. <laughs> oh. Anyways, yeah, I, I got, I smoked him. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's down right out here. So we'll gather our stuff together and we'll go see if we can't find him. <laughs> oh, crazy hunt. First buck I've shot in a couple years. Oh, I had to shoot one. I couldn't. They don't live that long out here, so we got that first one out of the way. Now we can hunt for something bigger, so stick around. We'll see if we can't go find this one. Well, as it turns out, I get down, I pick up the arrow that was in the ground, and it was barely in the ground, and it had meat and hair on it, and sure enough, I did hit that deer. So I'm thinking, here we go. We got two deer to track. Well, we're following the blood trail. And, uh... He's leaking pretty good, both sides. And uh, we just got off another blood trail. We couldn't find that one. I know this one is down back here. Coyotes are still going. Got blood, oh, there he is right there. There he is. Nice little light point. I probably, most times, run the shot this deer, but I got a little upset because I thought I'd missed the bigger one. And and I come to find out, I'd hit him. And uh, so we've been tracking him. I knew this one was down. So we started tracking the other one. We tracked him probably 300 yards and then we lost blood out in all this water. So I'm gonna come back in the morning and we'll look for him. 
And I was a little upset with myself because I missed and this one come out and actually started sniffing the arrow that I'd shot the other one with. <laughs> and I, I just, you know what, I took him. I haven't shot a buck in a couple years, so we got him down and he's fairly wide. He's just not very heavy, so. Well, what an exciting hunt my dad put together there. Uh, that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> so next up we got, who is it, Nick? Yeah, we've got Nick Bovee. They'll be joining us next week and Brandon Carter. So hopefully you join us next week. And as always, make your next shot a, a vital, vital shot. shot.